Hello everyone, here we're on page 10 of our physics IB past paper from May 2018, standard level paper one. And so question 18 here is a circuit and it's set up with, um, obviously with three resistors, nothing else in the circuit. And we're just asked to find the value that we would get if we were to measure the resistance at X and Y. So essentially we need to think about a couple of things. First of all, we need to think about what rule we would need to apply when looking at resistors in series. And the second thing we need to think about is what does that do to the resistance through the circuit at any point? Okay, so we're going to need to think about, or at least we need to have in the back of our minds our uh, data sheet here. So here's our data sheet from this section. And probably relevance here is just the, the measurements of resistance. So we have total resistance where we just add them all up or we have the reciprocal of all of the resistors added up. So using our two um, formulas from our data sheet, hopefully you can recall that if you have resistors in series, you're just gonna go ahead and add them all together. But if you have resistors in parallel loops, you're gonna add them together as reciprocals or as inverses of each other. So what's important here is to recognize that by having this wire to x and this wire to y, we effectively break the series circuit up. So it might be tempting, without thinking about this breaking up of the series circuit, it might be tempting just to add all of these resistors together like we would do if they were all in series. And if we do that, we would get, we would say that the total resistance would be 3 plus 3 plus 2, so we would get 8. Ohms. But that's not really what, how we want to think about this question, because by adding this, essentially adding a loop in here, let me just represent that here, we, this is a loop, we can think about the electrons flowing through this loop, but we also now need to think about this as being a separate loop. So probably it'd be better if we drew this, or it'd be a little bit clearer if we drew this as um, as a loop like this, okay, with a resistor here. And let's put a resistor here as well. These are the two three ohms. Okay, and it's gonna come down here. And then down here, we're gonna have our two ohm, and then some measuring device. Okay, this is gonna give us, this is our multimeter. Okay. So now we can see it's a bit clearer. There's no difference really between these two circuits. Um, but what we can see here now is that this is obviously a parallel circuit with these two resistors added together. So this is how we want to think about it. If we do that, we're going to start writing our resistor equation like this. We're going to say it's it, because it's in parallel, the total resistance, or one over the total resistance, is going to be equal to, well, first of all, I have to take care of this guy here. So one over two plus one over this combined resistance here. So three plus three. So in other words, one over six. And if I do that, I get the resistance, the total resistance to be one decimal five ohms. So there we go. Okay, so question 19. <clears throat> we have a liquid containing negative charges uh, that flow through this pipe, this square pipe. Um, there's obviously four sides to the square pipe, A, B, C, and D. And then we have this magnetic field that's um, acting across the... Or there's a field that penetrates the, the pipe. So we can see the, the diagram represents the direction of the liquid flow. So the direction of the liquid flow is coming out of the page like this. So we would normally represent that as a dot. Um, and remember, there's a charge in the... So there's this negative charge. So it's a negative charge in the liquid. Um, then we have this magnetic field. So the magnetic field direction is going from the right side of the page to the left side of the page. Obviously, that's passing through the pipe. And we're asked to uh, say which side of the pipe would the negative charge accumulate. 
So this is a moving charge through a magnetic field. And this is, at this point, we need to bring our hand rules in play. And of course, it's a negative charge. So we're going to be using our left hand rule. So this is our Fleming's left hand rule, LHR. And some people use the hand with the, the finger representing the force. I personally like to use the flat palm with the palm showing the force because I like to think about it as a push. And the, if you're going to push something, you wouldn't push it with a finger, you'd push it with the palm of your hand. So either way it works doesn't really matter as long as you get the bits of the hand correct. So what we will say is that, well, in this case, we've got the blue arrow representing the charge flow. And since it's, an, it's a left hand, uh, we would normally represent this as the electron direction of the electron flow. The red part of this diagram would represent the magnetic field direction. And then the green would represent the force experienced by the charge. OK. If we used the other technique with the finger, then obviously the thumb is still going to represent the electrons. This green arrow would represent the magnetic field, and the red, in this case, would be the force. Okay, it doesn't matter which one you use. My preference is just to go with the palm. Okay, so now it's just a case of manipulating our hand to be geometrically aligned with our diagram. So I'm going to have to um, I'm going to have to take my hand here, rotate it around. I need the thumb to represent this flow of electrons coming out of the page. So it's going to be sort of like this. Um, if you can kind of imagine the thumb there, that it's not going to quite work with the way I have this aligned. But I'll try and make it uh, clear. So I'm going to use blue here to represent these electrons. These are coming out of the page. Okay, this represents the flow. This B this magnetic field, this is going to represent the flow from this, uh, the field direction going from right to left. And then hopefully you can see, even though this diagram is not perfect, the palm of the hand in this case is going to be upwards. So what this tells us is that the negative charge is going to feel a force or experience a force towards the top of the pipe. And therefore, it's very likely to accumulate at the top of the pipe.